I'd like to share with you the words of Soledad, a fourth grade bilingual teacher in Brooklyn. In speaking about what memories and experiences she uses from her life as a bilingual speaker to help her teach better with her students, she said to me, you know, I use all of those memories because I remember what it was like to learn in a new language. And that's my advantage as their teacher. She went on to say, you know, Lillian, it never occurred to me, but all of these ways of knowing, my bicultural point of view, how to make modifications, all of those things are rooted in my strength as a bilingual speaker. That is what I'm referring to as the bilingual advantage. And it's what I'd like to talk about today. So yeah, I am proud of my bilingualism and how hard I have worked to be able to live my life fully as a bilingual. But that said, I've been teaching in a dual language classroom for about seven years now. And all I continue to hear from my administrators and my colleagues is that my class is behind because we're negotiating two languages. We're not keeping pace with the curriculum and that my students aren't getting the same you know, reading scores that their monolingual peers are. So I'm a little confused on how this advantage shows up in my life as a teacher and in my students' lives. So when I speak about the bilingual advantage, I'm not talking about the cognitive ones from brain studies that you might have learned about from the New York Times, no. I'm speaking about the sort of perspectives, the sort of lived experiences, and the type of memories that a bilingual speaker will bring to bear on their work in the classroom. I'd also add that when Soledad spoke about her advantage as a former English language learner, those stories were rife with tender memories of struggle, of feeling othered by classmates. But again, it was through this resilience that I saw her deploy every day with her students that she did speak to the advantage. So it's not all sunshine and roses. Some of them really come from difficult places, but that's what makes the advantage so much more powerful to bilingual teachers. That's an interesting point because a lot of my literacy coaches or colleagues, we attend these critical race uh, workshops on culturally sustaining pedagogy. And the common theme there is to center minority students' lives and the books we choose and the curriculum. But, but, but I know that many of their stories and their families' experiences are quite heartbreaking. And I don't know if I can do that. I don't want to make them feel badly. Like, where does the bilingual advantage come into play with all of these messages that I'm hearing if it's going to make my students feel bad? Yes, I saw Soledad celebrating her bilingual advantage through the sort of conferences she did with her students when she would celebrate her students' uptake of vocabulary. <laughs> In fact, she quipped to me once, Lillian, I don't need to read all of the research because I know what it feels like when I'm succeeding with my bilingual students. I said, hell yeah. <laughs> You know, I'd, I'd argue that Soledad demonstrated a mindset of culturally sustaining pedagogies, where she really modeled what bilingual joy looks like for her students. I don't think you can do CSRP education justice without having that type of framework in mind. Bilingual joy, I love that idea. Okay, now I feel like I'm on the same page with you. Can you give me more very concrete ways that I can celebrate this bilingual advantage? Here are five ways that you can celebrate your bilingual advantage. The first, acknowledge that your bilingualism is a strength. Second, use your memories learning in a new language to modify the curriculum for your multilingual learners. Number three, search out other like-minded, equity-driven bilingual teachers. There's always strength in num numbers. Number four, <laughs> remind your students that it takes time to acquire a new language, to be patient with the process. That one might be a little bit harder than you think. And then finally, my favorite, the fifth one, develop an empowerment mantra and repeat it daily. I am great because I am a bilingual teacher. Maybe do a little dance when you do the mantra. <laughs> Oh my God, an empowerment mantra. I love mantras. I love them because they're easy to come up with. I tend to actually use them and they really, they do change my mindset, especially when I'm in a crummy mood. Um, so thank you for that tip. 
Now, where can I go find other equity-minded bilingual teachers like myself? So curating a squad of like-minded, equity-driven bilingual teachers is going to take some time. But I'd say that's where somebody like me can really assist you because I have such an immense network of folks that are doing this type of work. Reach out to me on my socials and also on my website, languagematters.org. I'll point you in the right direction. And today, just simply celebrate your bilingualism and all of the beautiful affordances that it provides you and your students.